hi. So you notice I wore the bling because I got to tell you a story about uh, a certain gentleman called Jocelyn Hay. I'm actually seated in the Jocelyn Hay room and this is part of the Lord Errol. Now, why is it important I tell you about this? Because this room is actually available for private events, okay? So it can actually sit very comfortably, I believe. It would be eight, 10 around the table and probably even more. But it's a place where you have that event, your 40th, your 50th, and you've got this beautiful sit down menu and you've got a place where you can first sit down and chat before you move on to dinner. You've got your own bar and barman, which is just awesome, okay? However, because the room is here and you're going to see the most magnificent pictures of the Jocelyn Hay room, can I tell you the story about the Earl of Errol? His name was Jocelyn Hay and he was a kamukora of his day. Let's not mess around. Now, he was the eldest son of a diplomat. His father was called Victor Hay and later he became the Earl of Errol. Now, after passing his foreign office examinations, Jocelyn Hay was expected to follow in his father's footsteps and become a diplomat, but he had other ideas. What happened instead is that he got infatuated with Lady Edina, and actually when you come to the Lord Errol, there's a terrace named after her, the Lady Edina Terrace. Lady Edina soon divorced her husband, and she and Hay were married that very year. But obviously, this is the sort of thing that had society in England clutching at their pearls. And do you know why? Because this Kamukora called Jocelyn Hay uh, was actually marrying a woman who had been divorced twice and she was eight years his senior. She was the first Kashugamami of her time. Okay. So he and Edina moved to Kenya in 1924 and financing obviously the move with Edina's money because who else had chooms? It was the sugar mummy. Once they landed, they joined the Happy Valley set. Now let me tell you, the Happy Valley set, Mpasho doesn't have enough time to write the stories of these guys. They were an elite group of expatriates, colonial expatriates, who were notorious for drug use, drinking, adultery and promiscuity, among other things. They would have been fodder for days. Huda and Vera would never have had a chance if these guys were around. But Jocelyn Hay soon became part of this group and he accumulated debts. Don't ask me doing what. And he had inherited his titles by that time. So Jocelyn Hay was then Lord of Errol. Okay. His wife divorced him in 1930, not because of adultery or promiscuity. He was cheating on her financially. He was stealing her chooms. So she told him, out okay he then married the divorced edith murray but here's the thing have you noticed that the kamukora has a type they've got to be divorced okay and they lived in osirian i don't know whether it was osirian or kisirian but it says in the story a moroccan style house on the shores of lake naivasha and his new wife succumbed to the hedonistic lifestyle of happy valley on the outbreak of world war ii lord errol jocelyn hay whose room I'm sitting in, became a captain in the Kenyan regiment and accepted the post of military secretary for East Africa in 1940. So you must remember, we didn't start promoting notorious people the other day. We've been doing it for a while. So anyway, Lady Errol, this was his second wife, died. And then at the Mufaiga Country Club, just down the road from here, Lord Errol met and subsequently had an affair with a lady called Diana. She was wife to a gentleman called Sir Jock. And ultimately, she became a baroness. Now, her husband learned of the affair. And after spending a night with Lady Diana, Lord Errol was found shot in the early morning hours at a crossroads on the Ngong. You know how Muzungu say Ngong? No, by the way, I'm having fun with the story. In the Nairobi Ngong Road on 24th January, 1941. Now, if you go online, you do realize this is one of those stories that's told over and over again because the mystery of who killed him is a big deal. Because of course, the person who was accused of the murder were Sir Jock, the husband of Lady Diana. Okay, not that one, another one from 1930 something, okay. And he was arrested and he was tried, but apparently the evidence against him was so weak and everything about the entire thing just could not hold up in court, so he was acquitted. However, he committed suicide in England a year later. Lord Errol, Jocelyn Hay, subsequently died and was buried in the graveyard of St. Paul's Church in Kiambu. Yes, the guy is still around here, the Kamukora. His earldom and his lordship of Hay 
passed on to his only daughter Diana by his first wife. Simple as that. So I'm telling you the story so you can understand. When you come to the Lord Errol, it's not just the amazing ambience. It's not just the well put together room, the setting, the food that is excellent, the staff that are amazing, but there's history here. So when you go through the bar and you see the Highlander, when you go through you know, the different terraces and you see the names, when you see the gardens and you see the names there, Google them because they are steeped in history and not just any history, our history as Kenyans. So the next time you have an absolutely important event that you want to have and you want absolute privacy, but you also want to be decadent because you deserve it, I would suggest you ask the Lord Errol whether you can go to the Jocelyn Hay room or because I know how you guys are. Can we have that room, Ilea, Caroline? <laughs> I know you so well. But I want to say once again to the Lord Errol, congratulations on your many awards. If it was, was the Oscars, you'd probably have sweeped about eight. But it is well, well deserved. Cheers.